that we may hear and be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray with us, giving. Amen. 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 Um, can you, uh, I know I know time is far gone, but help me sing this song as our sister was leading worship. Um, this song, we, 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 can, we, can, we can testify to this song for this year very much. Yes. If you can help me sing, help me sing it. For your name is holy, holy, Lord. For your name is holy, holy, Lord. Lord, I worship. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. I worship you. For your name accident and died. We are not different than the people who went to bed and did not wake up. But he is holy. We have woke up this morning. He's woke us up this morning. Our family is alive this morning. Our children are alive. Our parents are alive. You did not lose your job during the pandemic. Mm. You are still alive. You are still here. His mercy is still upon your life. For your name is holy. Holy Lord. For your name is holy. Holy Lord. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. I worship you. For your name is holy. Holy. He's the savior of our sins. He's the deliverer yes. of every addicted habit. He's the baptizer mm. in the Holy Spirit. He's the bread yes. when we are thirsty and the water, the bread when we are hungry and water when we are thirsty. Yes, He's God. the mighty yes, God. God. He's the faithful one. He's the mm. faithful bride. He's the faithful person to yes. all of us yes. who are this yes. year. Yes. Our God 
is a psychiatric to the confused, to the person yes. who doesn't know what to do. He's the yes. one that leads us. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He is the soon coming king. He's our God. He's mighty. He's our first Adam. He's the good shepherd. He's the one that lives in our lives. He's Alpha and Omega. The heavens and the earth proclaim his name. He is a living God. He's the one that lives in us. He's the one that we see in our hearts and minds. He's the one that leads us to all good things. We bless your name, Lord, and we magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Shall we open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 16, verse 13? Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. I'm reading from the NIV, <clears throat> NIV version. So when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea's Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do you people say the son of man is? They replied. Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Beloved, this morning, my sermon is on the topic, what is your perception of God? Who do you think God is? Who do you, how do you see God? Um, when Jesus asked the disciples, the disciples gave him what other people are thinking, what other people perceive Jesus Christ to be. And I can only imagine that because the other people who have been seeing the wonders and the things that he's been doing were likening some of the characteristics of these prophets to Jesus Christ. So they were likening some of the characteristics of Jeremiah, they were likening some of the characteristics of John the Baptist, they were likening some of the characteristics of Elijah to who God is, because that's the one they have seen in the past. That's what they are, that's what they, they know. So they perceive Jesus Christ to be one of those prophets. They perceive Jesus Christ to be one of those people. So I asked myself, so who is Jesus Christ? And John the Baptist gave an answer: He is the Son of the Living God. He is Christ. I went to the Bible and I was trying to find out. How do I find out who is Jesus Christ? John chapter one says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with him. Through him, all things were made that nothing was made. That means in the beginning, Jesus Christ was there. The word was there and the father was there. That is the, the God that we believe in, the God that we serve. Um, that's the characteristics of our God. From the beginning, he was there. God is thought to be a supreme being, the creator of all things, right? The principal object of faith that we worship. Even every, every, every religion says they worship God um, through their own means. We believe that we worship God through Jesus, amen? And if you don't know who Jesus is, if your perception of God is not right, you never understand what he does and what he means to you. His perception, the perception that you have of God doesn't change who he is. He is the I am, amen? He is the one who lives forever and ever. He was, is, and is to come, amen? Um, so in the Bible, Jesus made several proclamations of I am seven times in the Bible, right? In Exodus chapter three, verses 13 and 14, Moses said, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of our father has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I remember I was doing, we were doing some Bible studies at some point and somebody said, the reason why the Israelites were, seem to always go back and then go back into sin and go and do things and then God will forgive them then they'll go back. They didn't have a relationship with the beginning, right? The beginning was like, there was a father, there was a man somewhere he gives instruction to Moses and Moses come and tell him. They didn't know who God is, right? Their perception of God was the ruler or the dictator or the person who gives instructions and then they have to follow. So the least chance they get, they just slide off and then go and do what they want or do what their own hearts desire. But it, when Moses asked, who should I say? He said, go and tell them that I am that I am. I am who I am. That is the God that we serve. Is that the perception that you have of God? Again, in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus answered, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Is that the perception that you have of God? He is the I am. And these that I'm going through are the seven I am's that he said in the Bible. He is the I am, right? Is that the perception that you have? Is that the understanding that you have of the God that we worship? That you can only go to heaven or you can only go to God through him. Many believers, many different religions all say they worship God. Apart from the ones that worship, the, who are Satanists. The ones that all worship God, they say oh, they all worship God. But in the means to which they worship God is what is different in our perspective, right? It's just like a saying that I heard that um, five blind people were trying to explain what a, an elephant is by the virtue of where they touch on the elephant. So they, they are five blind people. There's an elephant. Go and touch the elephant and describe to us how you see the elephant, right? So one person touched the, the trunk. And then the elephant is like a long, leathery, stretched thingy. That's what an elephant is. The other person touched this, the, the tusk. Oh, an elephant is like a strong horn. The other person touched the skin. They say, oh, the elephant is like a huge wall made of leather. The other person touched the tail. Say, the elephant is so fluffy. So it's like, because they don't know, their perception is what they can see. Because the world don't know who God is, their perception is what they see from us. Their perception is what they see from us, our daily lives and what we do. That is what the God, the perception of the world of God, how we portray Jesus in our lives. Amen. In John chapter 15, verse 5, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me, I am you. You will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The Bible letting us understand that. Apart from him, we can do nothing. We stem from the branches. We, we are from, he is the vine and we are the branches. So we stem from the vines. So we have to act more and more like our God and our maker. Amen. In John chapter 8, verse 58, he said, Verily, truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, Before Abraham was born, I was. This is the God that we serve. Before the universe was created, just like John 1, 1, he was there. Before every, anything was made in the universe. That is for us to understand that there's nothing that is too mighty for the Lord to deal with. There's nothing that is too strong for the Lord. He is, was there from the beginning. He is now and he still will be. Amen. In John chapter 6, verse 47 to 48, he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. He is the bread when you are hungry. He is the bread of life. He, that bread that when you take, you become a Christian. Then you become more Christ-like, that you live a life of Christ. Amen. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He, this is the Lord that we serve. This is the Lord that we worship. He said to me in Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega again, the beginning and the end. So these are the I am. So I was looking, I'm like, this is what God says he is. This is the character that we see. And the character of God, we can see that in the, in the seven spirits of God, right? In the seven spirits of God, it talks about who God is. So that we can also live a life of like, a life like that. We can also live our life portraying and looking up onto Jesus Christ. That is the character of God that makes him who he is. That can change and shape our perspective of how we see God and how we do things. Um, in Isaiah chapter 11, it says, A shoot will come from up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Amen. These are the seven spirits. And the spirit of counsel and might. Might means power. Power to walk in the anointing. Power to walk and trample over serpents. The spirit of counsel, the one that speaks to us and talks to us. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. That represents holiness. To be holy unto the Lord. He says no one can go to heaven except they be holy. Be holy unto the Lord. That's holiness. So when Jesus Christ creates us when 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 we are created in his own image his spirit comes 
dwells in us. His spirit dwells in us. When we accept Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, his spirit comes in us. Then the spirit gives us the knowledge of who he is by virtue of the fact of truth in the Bible, reading the Bible, understanding the Bible, living the Bible. Day-to-day -day life. Our day-to-day -day life is what determines how we see God once we read the Bible and we communicate and interact with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Amen. Then we have the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel and power, and then the fear of the Lord. He said, these are the seven spirits of God. When I was going through and I was preparing this message, I was like, seven. There's so many significance of seven in the Bible, and I'm sure most of you know. There's so many sevens in the Bible. In the, in the Hebrew and in the days of old, seven was a sign of perfection. So that means that our God is perfect by him having seven spirits, right? He created the world in seven days. He broke two breads and two fishes for the multitudes and had lots more left over. Those are the seven spirits. The, the, the seven lamp stands that we have that represents the spirit of the Lord. The seven lamp stands in the Bible. The seven lamps that John saw when he turned and he saw in Revelations when he saw Jesus. The seven lamps. Those represent the seven churches in Asia. The seven seals that were to be broken. The seven trumpets that were blown around the walls of Jericho. The fact that they had to go around the walls seven times and on the seventh day they blow the trumpet seven times. And it's a sign of perfection. That is who our God is. The perception I have of the Lord that we worship is that he is the all supreme being who created this universe, who wrote this Bible, the architect of this Bible, and it is perfect in his eyes. After he created man, he said, it is perfect. It is perfect in his eyes. So over 150,500 um, years, for the authors and three continents, we know that the Bible is perfect because it has one architect, and everybody echoes the same thing. That is the God that we worship, right? That is the understanding of the man that we have. That once we live in him, once we portray who he is, right? Once our life, the perception that the world has of us reflects the perception of God, then we are living a life that is Christ-like. We are living a life that is worthy to be called. We are Christians, amen? Our perception of God does not change who he is, but how we see him is based on our past experiences and our faith. Our perception of God doesn't change who he is. So if I see God to be set A, it doesn't change the fact that he's A, B, A to Z, amen? Our perception of him is from everything that is around us, is from what we have experienced of him in our past and our faith. So if God, has delivered you from something he's your deliverer if he has kept you from dying he's your savior he's the savior of your life and your soul if he has he has died for you on the cross if that is who you see him to be he's your savior if our lord has protected you from the disease he has protected you from any sickness he has protected you from um, any kinds of accident he's your protector if above all things that goes on in your life he shows you love he shows you mercy he's the love of your life He's the merciful God to you. That is who you see him to be because of the experience you have. Not because of what has been preached. Not because of what somebody has said. But because of the encounters that you have had with him. That shifts your perspective of God. The things that he has done in your life. The things that he has done to you. The things that when you were in a tight corner. Or the things that when you were broken and then you were at the bottom. The way he lifted you. He's the lifter of your soul depends on what God has done for you and the encounters you've had with him. That is who he is. And that is the perception that you build in your heart for him. When it comes to your faith, it is what you know true and true in your heart and in your mind about God. So if I say to this mountain, this mountain move and it shall move, because of my faith, I know that that is the kind of God that I have. If I have a job interview and I say that, you know what? This job, this job is mine. I have the faith that this job is mine. That is the perception of God that you have. That 
above everything, above whoever is ever in, interviewed before you, above whoever has more credentials before you, you know that because of the God you serve, the God, because of the God you worship, this job is yours. I remember when I was going for an interview a while back and I was praying. I remember I was praying with my wife when I was driving over there and I was praying, I was praying, I was praying. I was praying. When I got there, the person who was supposed to be interviewing me, we sat down, he bought food, we started eating and we started talking about what I'll be doing on the job when I thought I was going for an interview. If you have faith that this job is for me, regardless of whoever else is interviewed, that is your faith. You have faith that the Lord will deliver this unto you. That is the faith that you have and that is the perception you have of God. I believe that he can do all things. I believe that I can do all things because God is with me. I believe that I am not the tail, but I'm the head because God is with me. That is my faith. I believe that I will never, ever lose my job because of what I am not able to do because God is with me and I know what to do. Amen. That is the faith that we have. If you, that, that faith is what ch changes your perception about God. That faith is what lets you know who God is, how he is, so that when the world see you, when the world see how you portray Christ in you, you know that indeed, they will know that indeed there's a God that we serve and a God that lives in us. Amen. Shall we open our Bibles to Luke chapter 24, verses 17 and 33? Luke chapter 24, verses 17 and 33. Luke chapter 24, I'm going to be from the verse 13. Um, now that same day, Two of them were going to a village called a mouse, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked among them. But they kept not recognizing him. They were not, they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor or, or to Jerusalem? Or do you not know the things that have happened in these past days? What things, he asked, about Jesus the Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, a powerful powerful in word and deed before God and all the people the chief priest and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him but we had hope that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel and that was more it was the third day since this is the third day since all this took place in addition some of our amazing women They went to the tomb early in the morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of the, our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory and beginning with Moses and all the prophets he explained to them what was said in all of scripture concerning himself as they approached the village in which they were going Jesus acted as if he was going further but they urged him strongly stay with us for it is nearly evening the day is almost over so we, so he went in and stayed with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and began to give it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared in their sight. Amen. And he disappeared in their sight. This is the story when Jesus Christ, um, resurrected and then these people were going 
And they did not recognize him from the beginning, right? They did not know that the person they are working with, the person who has been talking to them, is Jesus Christ. Now, when they got to, um, as they approached the village where they were going to, Jesus Christ acted as if he was going far. One of the things that I want us to understand is that until we invite him in, in he's not going to show up. He's not going to come. We have to invite him in. So he pretended as if he was going far for them to invite him in. Amen. So they invited him in. Now, we can't do anything and our perception cannot change of this God that we serve unless we invite him into our hearts. Unless we invite him and say, Lord, come and be the Lord of my life. Come and stay in my heart. Come and be the author and the perfecter of my soul. Amen. And when he sat at the table, he broke bread with them. He said he, he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And as soon as he broke the bread, their eyes were open. As soon as he broke the bread, they recognized that this is Jesus. This is the God that we've been talking about the whole journey over here. I want, believers, I want you to understand, until you are broken, you never see the perception. There has to be a time in your life where you are broken, where, where, where you hit rock bottom, where you have nobody to turn to but God. Until you have nowhere to turn to, until there's nobody that can give you a solid word, until you encounter him for yourself until you know that this is the God I worship. There's no way that you can see who he is. He can be right in front of you. Everything in our life, everything around us every day is who God is in our lives. Every time that we wake up and we see the skies, it is God. Every time that we see the grass in our houses, it is God. The trees, the cars that go up and down. The fact that you get on a, on a you, you sit in your car, you drive to work and come back, it is God. But if your perception of him doesn't change, you will never see it. If, if you don't come to the point where you understand that I need this God in my life, this is the God that I want to worship. If, if, if you don't come to the point where you are broken to the point that nobody can say anything to you that can make sense, except the Holy Spirit, except the Spirit of God, you will not have that, you will not see him in your life. You will not see him in your everyday life, in our everyday life, in our everyday life. There's a song that we sing, it says, when the weak say, I am strong, but we are in Christ. But it's worth saying that whilst we were yet strong, his message was upon our life. That means we are not weak. We can see him in our life, in everything that we do. If, you, if, if your eyes are open, if you have come to that point, or if you have passed that point, and then you have that realization that everything that is around me, everything that I see in front of me, even if I don't see what it is, I know that God's hand is in it. I know that his mighty hand is in it. You cannot see that until you are broken in Christ, until the Holy Spirit has broken you, until you have come to the point where you understand that I live and have my being in him. There's nothing I can do without him. You will not have that perception that he is the all in all. He's the alpha and the omega. You have to be broken. Just as he did after he broke the bread for the multitudes. There are over 5,000 men that he broke the bread for. As soon as he broke the bread, there was multiplication. The bread multiplied, the fish multiplied. Everybody had something to eat and there was left over. As soon as he told the disciples, do this in remembrance of me. There's remembrance of that night and what he does for us. He broke the bread and he said, take this and remember me anytime you take this. We remember our God. Beloved, this is my message to you this morning. At some point in your life, there has to be a brokenness. At some point in life, God has to break you. At some point in life, he has to give you no other option than for you to know that the only person that can help me, the only person that I, I can go to, the only person that can make the situation better is our God and our God only. That is the God that we worship. That is the God that we serve our eyes will be opened and our perception of him can be changed. Just as the people's eyes were opened, as soon as he broke the bread, as soon as he gave thanks, as soon as he took it, their eyes were opened and they could see. As soon as our lives are broken, our hearts are broken, our minds are broken, that we come to the realization, this is the one who we need to serve. This is the one who can take us out of this trouble. This is the one who can cure and get us a vaccine that will be 100% correct. This is the one 
that can make every election safe. This is the one that can make my children going to be good people. This is the one that can help me in this life. This is the one that I have no other option than to serve. This is the one that can make me take my car, drive, and come back home. It is not automatic. As soon as we can realize that, our eyes will be open, and we shall see who our God is, the perception that we have of our God. This is the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.